Proverbs chapter 18, we're getting great lessons out of Proverbs of life. Yay and nay. Proverbs is, is one of them books, the chapter. And not only the chapter, but the individual verses. And even individual verses are divided sometimes into two great truths. So you're getting more than 31 chapters. Through desire, a one, a man having separated himself, not for sanctification, seeketh and inter, to intermeddle with, interfere with all wisdom. What is that? That's your monks. That's your religious personnel that go off into the caves and off to the mountains, your friars and all that. They're going to go live a, a, a separate life. They're not going to have electricity. They're not going to have a, a spouse. They're going to have no other responsibilities but to pray, eat, and... That doesn't save your soul. That just has the whole world look at you. Oh, look how good you are. nonsense a fool oh where we fools won't read proverbs has no delight in understanding and understanding again is that relationship to god fools don't want to know about god well yes they do you haven't been in any public ministry in my lifetime i've been in door knocking i've been street preaching I've been in the prison ministry. I've dealt with people with an open Bible. I've dealt with gospel tracts. I've dealt with all kinds, not all, public ministry. And that person does not want to know about God and understanding God. He does not want to know about God. The Bible says he's a fool. Why is it that Daytona Beach, Florida would love for us to have our paintings to be put on a table at the farmer's market, but they would not have us to have Jesus Christ. Why is it in Daytona Beach you can hear non music of, of country music and rap music and rock and roll, and you can hear over a loudspeaker uh, someone who hit a ball out in the outfield or... They're going left-hand turn. They're going left-hand turn. They're going left-hand turn. But if you're to raise up the name of Jesus Christ, you got to shut him up. But that his heart, the fool's heart, may discover himself. It, it, you know, this person, i got to go find myself. Idiot, look in the mirror. There you are. I've got to know why I'm here. Revelation chapter 4. You mean why I'm here is in the Bible? Yeah, Revelation chapter 4. Verse 11. Mark this verse down. Why am I here? Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You know why you're created? You know why you're here? You're to give God honor, power, glory, reverence, praises. And if you don't, you've sinned against God. A sports, an actor, an actress, a pastor, a teacher. Me, myself, and I, my wife, my job, a car. And you fail to what God's brought you here to be. When the wicked, and I haven't said this often when we're doing it, but that wicked is pretty much also, it's the Antichrist. I mean, the Antichrist is the wicked. And I know in general, 
You know, you talk about the wicked person, but we're looking at that man of wicked, the wicked. So we're looking at an evil person. And we're looking at the Antichrist. Cometh, when the wicked cometh, then cometh also content, disgrace, and shame. When the Antichrist comes during Jacob's trouble, it's not going to be a time of prosperity. The time of period, I know we call it the Great Tribulation, the Tribulation, the Great Tribulation, which is our proper name. What about the other name called Jacob's Trouble? Oh, I know the, the Christian movies make the Tribulation period. Woo! You mean the same Christian movies that, that Fred Smith gets up and says, my name is Charlie? And the man that gets up who, who is actually an electrician, or an actor himself, and he says he's the police chief? You mean a liar. We've got a Christian movie. you got a Christian lie because there are people proclaiming their names not to be their name. Uh, I mean, there's a good Christian movie out. Uh, uh, oh, Time, Time Traveler. The four scientists or five scientists that play in the time changer, that's not their real name. And they're not from 18 or 17, whatever period it is. And the man that works for the police department does not work for the police department. And the wife is not his wife, who's a school teacher. You imagine those, if they are Christians, and I don't know. You imagine those Christians going to be standing before God one day at the judgment seat of Christ. What are all these lies? Well, you said you were married to him. You said you were disoccupied. Well, we did it for a Christian. So you want me, God, who never lied, cannot lie, will not lie, unable to lie. You want me to bless and give you gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, and inheritance for a lie. And you know what the modern church says today? Yes. You know what God says? Poof. No. And with ignominy, that's it's a shame, reproach. When the wicked man comes, when the wicked man comes, the Antichrist and the wicked man, it's supposed to bring shame. It's supposed to bring disrespect. It's supposed to be disgrace. And look at who the world raises up in honor. The world. I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about the world. The names that there are in the names and the news today. All over the world. And I'm not talking just politics. I'm talking the entertainment. I'm talking the career. I'm talking the sports. The words of a man's mouth are deep water, and a wellspring of wisdom as flowing brook. Now look, we, we, well, there's so many aspects James and Solomon writes about the lips, about the mouth. Here he's saying, you know what? Peace and pureness. Now people don't like how loud I am, but they don't realize I've got the peace and I'm telling you about the pure words of, of the Bible. You don't want to hear it. I had two people that last Saturday come up with me with filthy and bow. One of them was a Christian uh, word. Really? You know, when I grew up as a little boy, young, and maybe into my teenage years, if a hard-nosed man of vile reputation, if that man would be cussing and he find out there was a woman or a child present, they would turn to that woman or, or turn to that child. I've had this happen. They would, excuse my French. That's what they used to say about cussing. Excuse my French. Today, they just let it go all out. 
to a man that's got the wisdom of the Bible, the wisdom of eternal life, and you cuss him out. Man, evil is good and good is evil. It is not good to accept the persons of the wicked. You wait till the Antichrist comes. Can I say it? Can I say it? I have never heard out of the mouth of Donald Trump his profession of Jesus Christ. And look at all the Christians. Look at all the Christians that love him. They have, I saw a picture today, like the Hollywood sign in California. They had put a sign like it that says Trump. I quoted today in the Bible, the New Testament, Jesus said, I've come in my Father's name, and I forget what. But he that comes in his own name, him that, I put that, and I put the name T-R-U-M-P to it. Now listen, I pray for the salvation of Donald Trump and his wife and his daughter and his son. He is the President of the United States. I acknowledge him as the President of the United States. I have seen his authority. Because the man's wicked. The man has bankrupted his company. The man has been divorced. And that man were to walk, if I were to walk into a Baptist church, an average Baptist church, say I went bankrupt and I've been divorced three times. You know the pastor of that church would, would say, no, you can't come back here. And yet Donald, the name of Donald Trump, it will be allowed. The, it's not good to accept the persons of the wicked. All have sinned and come to shore of the glory of God. Yet a man that does not reverence the name of Jesus Christ, the man that reverence not the Almighty God, the man that does not reverence the Bible, oh, he held a Bible up in front of a church. That church had nothing to do with Jesus Christ, and I wonder what Bible version that was he was holding. Some people say it was even upside down. And yet, you got a man who preaches the gospel, knows the Bible, and all that, and, and you don't use him. You don't. There are people all across the world. I know a husband and wife team say whether you want to say it or not. A wife shouldn't preach the gospel. I'll tell you right now, they're out there preaching the gospels all over the world. Jerusalem, London, India. Oh, it's not for a woman to preach. You ain't doing nothing. You know the last movements of a political figure, Democrat or Republican, but you can't name the 12 disciples. You know all about the presidential race, but you don't know how to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. What's wicked and what's evil? Well, can you move on? We don't no. After November, I'll be off the issue and I'll be on Christmas. Finish my Christmas thing today. To overthrow the righteous in judgment. Herod, Festus, and Pilate. All Democrats are bad. And I'm, I'm, I'm coming from my church and the Baptist church. All Democrats are bad. All? What if there is a Democrat somewhere in the 50 states who loves the Lord, loves the Bible, and wants to do right? He's bad because he's a Democrat. You overthrew him in judgment. Righteous judgment. There are people today, I know plenty of people who don't vote. Thank God. Christians. There are, there are Christians today, I look down upon because you don't vote. To overthrow the righteous in judgment? You're going to overthrow me because I don't vote, but I love the Bible. I love Jesus. I do what the Bible tells me to do. I confess my sins. I study the Bible, read the Bible every day, and I try to help Christians grow, and I try to tell the lost people about Jesus Christ. But you don't want to know anything about me. You don't want to be my friends because I don't vote. You're the one who needs to repent. Everybody's saying, I wish, I wish the election will hurry up. I hope the rapture happens at, the, at, at 15 minutes before the opening of the polls in November. Hope everybody, all right, I'm going to go to the voting. I'm going to go vote. Do, 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 the Trump of God. 
I didn't get to vote for the Trump of Washington. I'll be up in I'll be in the clouds. <laughs> Ruin, ruin your year. Listen, I know a Christian. I shouldn't say this. I'm going to. I know a Christian that that had one of the mortgages on your house. I forget what it's called. And he got tons of money from that, and he gave all his money to the Republican office. And they sent him blankets and quarters and half dollars and pleas for more money. They're not helping him now, and he, he's in finance, and he's in medical help. I don't think Donald Trump or the other guy, I don't think they're going to visit your funeral. All right, I'll move on. A fool, and we're back to fool. A fool's lips, ooh, there we go again, lips, enter into contention, argument. And his mouth calls for strokes. That means correction. That's a rod. Public humiliation of the beating. You know Paul was beaten by rods? You know why Paul was beaten by rods and whipped? For the word of God. Do you know what the public was saying about the word of God through Paul's mouth? You're a fool. Didn't they beat him? Did they not beat John and Peter because they confessed the name of Jesus? They had the Sanhedrin telling John and Peter, you're foolish, you're, you're, you're fool. If Daytona Beach ever came to me and brought me to a public uh, a, a beating because I preached the gospel, they're telling me that my words and the words of the Bible and the words of Jesus Christ, you're a fool. Wait till those fools stand before God one day. It is the fool that has said in his heart that there is no God. When you read that verse like that, that's the, that's the fool saying, I need a beating, beat me. And they give a beating to Jesus with the mouth of God. They give the beating to Peter and, and John. They preach the gospel and, they, and God healed the man of, of being lame in the temple. And then they went out and preached the word of God. They beat Paul. They stoned Paul for the word of God. A fool's mouth. Boy, Solomon gets on that fool. Is destruction. That's his son. I don't know if Solomon knows it or not, but that's his son. Jeroboam and, and the children of Israel come up to Rehoboam. You know, your father, man, that guy overburdened us. That guy overworked us. That guy overtaxed us. We need some relief. Solomon was a Democrat. We need a Republican in office. <laughs> and the words of of Solomon's son, Rehoboam. My father chasing you with, squ with uh, scorpion. I'm going to. My little finger will be thicker than my father's loin. I'm going to whip you, chastise you with scorpions and all. The men that were sat under Solomon, the men who had wisdom of age, not the high school buddy. Appease the people. The people that sat under Solomon, like, you know, Jeroboam's right. And the scriptures proclaim that, that you were not to have the children of Israel serve with rigor like they did in Egypt. And, and Rehoboam went to those elders of Solomon and said, yeah. But Rehoboam went to, the, to his high school buddy, no, oh, make it worse. He destroyed the nation of Israel that it split into ten nations and two nations and has not gotten back since to the Lord Jesus Christ come. There has been Israel north and Judah south. 
and his lips are a snare, a trap. Think about it. you find a mouse in your house. <laughs> mouse in your house. And you, you get a mouse trap and you put cheese in it and you set the trap and that, that mouse, woo, free cheese. That's it. That's it. And he's saying with the lips is like that 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 mouse trap. Jesus said, every idle word that man shall speak, he shall give an account. Aren't you glad the great white throne judgment? There's no more time after that. We are in the eternal life after. We are in the eternal life, then comes the great white throne judgment. You realize everybody from Adam, because Adam will be at the great white throne judgment, name be in the book or not, probably. The only people that will not be at the great white throne judgment are Christians in the church age. Everybody else would be there. Now, it depends if your name is in that book. If you're in the church age, if you live in the church age and you're at the great white throne judgment, you've got no hope. But every other age, there's some hope. I'm trying to put the great white throne judgment in a nutshell. But do you realize Jesus said every idol. Now, the Christian is going to be wood, hay, or stubble. Gold, silver, precious stones would be rewards, crowns, and inheritance. That's what the judgment seat. I think the judgment seat of Christ is going to be the seven years of tribulation. I, I, I could be wrong. I mean, we mount up afterwards at the seven years. But at the great white throne judgment, Jesus said, every man shall give an account of every idol word. Imagine every man going back to Adam. And there is no more time. Let's take Cain, the first murderer. Cain walks up to God. Everything he said that's not even recorded in the Bible. He's going to have to give an account. You take, you go over to China right now. I don't know if it's light. I think, I think we're dark. You take the, China, the Chinese person that's going to a restaurant right now. I don't know their name. The one that just walks into a restaurant. That man, if he never believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to give an account for every word of Chinese he said. You take the current Pope that's sitting in Italy of the Catholic Church, he's going to give an account for every word that he said. The Queen Elizabeth in England is going to give it a, I don't know if she's saved or not. But if she's not saved, she's going to give an account for every word that she said. The person somewhere in this world today, wherever it is, he's going about to commit suicide. He's had it. He's not saved. He's done with the world. He dies at the great white throne judgment. He's going to give an account for every word he said. Those lips, those words are going to be a snare to his soul. Well, I didn't know anything about Jesus Christ. And then God's going to account you to every time you said the name of Jesus Christ. Though it was a cuss. Imagine every time as a lost man you mentioned Jesus Christ. Or GD. OMG. A fool's mouth is his destruction, his destruction, and his lips a snare, a trap of the soul. The words of a talebearer, a liar, a gossip, a whisperer. We read about whisper the other night. Are as wounds. We know what wounds are. Like a man who's been wounded. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. That's where your nerves are. I had a doctor tell me one time. I was, I, I was being diagnosed with something. And I had been asking him a question. And we were talking. I said, Doc. I forget, but I said, How come 
when you got a real fear, and it's real, and you can feel it in your gut, like, you know, uh, or you get that sickening feel, you know, whatever, you get that feeling in your gut. And the doctor told me, I, I forgot what line of doctoring he was. He says, the nerves in your body go from your head to your stomach. Then they branch out. Your body, when you get that sick feeling in your stomach, that's that's an alarm. Say, like there's there's something there's something problem here. So what the verse is saying is, when when somebody tells tales and lies about you, that hits right to the stomach, and that, that's a cause for ulcers. That's a cause for uh, upset stomach. That's a cause for many things. It's unhealthy for somebody to be lying about you. Imagine God holding you to that. You know that guy's alter you? Your, your co-worker's alter? Yeah. You know about that Christian over there had the alter? Yeah. What about, you know, he had, what about your spouse that had the upset stomach in their whole? Yeah. It was your fault. Whoa. He also that is slothful, lazy, bone in his work. He's got a job. But he stretches out the whole day. A job that takes one hour takes him two hours. He spends much time at the coffee, at the water cooler, in the bathroom. He's got solitaire on his computer. That's one thing I like about mecha auto mechanics. I don't. I think lawyers do have that. There's a book that says how long it takes you to change a, a headlight. You know, a lot of employers should should have that one book. You know, this report. All, this is how long it's going to take, and it took you double. Is a brother to him that is a great, great, great waster. You've just been paid by your employer and you wasted time. This is a government. The government. Listen, I work for a government. I work many times for the government in jobs I've had. When I work for the government building submarines, okay, all right, I, I had to I had to call in a grinder. That's someone who, who not not the food. That's a guy who's got to grind the paint or grind the steel. That guy that would, it would take a day just to get that that department over to where I was, and that guy would bring all his hoses. And put his hoses down. Oh, it's time for coffee break. See you about in 15 minutes. And he would spend the time from the break to the lunch period sizing up the job. And we come back from lunch, between lunch and the next break, he'd be hooking up all his equipment. And then after that break, you know, it's too late to do anything because it's almost time. We'll, we'll do the job in the morning. It was a model for the government job. Hurry up and wait. God will hold the government and employee and to employers that if a job should have been done in an hour if it took you two, three, four, a day or two weeks, you're going to be held accountable. Because you stole money from your employee. An employer has stolen money from the person that wanted the job done. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous runneth into it and is safe. It's a, it's a defense. Times of trouble. Run to the Lord. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. 
Money can buy me anything. Not when you're sitting across from the doctor's office say, okay, okay, Mr. Billionaire, yachts and fancy cars and a mansion and I've got your test results here. What is it? It's terminal. How much is it going to, money ain't going to do it. I'm sorry. You can give me everything you have right now. You can sign it, but your term, it's. And as in high wall in his own conceit, build the highest wall you can. I'm trying to find this note. And what it's saying is, what what the what man says is money is the answer. And the Bible says, no, it's not. Because when you show up at the great white throne judgment, you have no wallet or pocket for your finances. When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you're not going to pass a plate around to gather a collection so you can buy God off. Before destruction, Let's say destruction, one, it's going to be one o'clock. Quarter of one and all the time before. Before destruction, the heart of man is haunting. You know what that means? That means he's proud. Did we not just do a verse the other night that says pride comes before destruction? So if you are a man of pride, and I won't say it, I won't say nothing about one man of pride. And if you're a Christian and you got pride, don't go boo hooing when God destroys what you have. It's a biblical fact. And I know Christians who will value date pride. There's some pride that's good. Listen, there are some fools. We read the other night that there was actually one, one or two good fools in the Bible. But there's no good pride. And if pride brings a destruction, which we have read, if you cover up pride and water down pride, And the worst way to get that destruction is at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment because you can't repent and get it right. Pride right now, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all right. You can cleanse and you can be forgiven by, by confessing your pride. And you can fight with God to do what's right. And before honor is humility. You can get right from pride. Not when you've died and gone off into saved or lost into eternity. Now, I'm going to read verse 12 again. You don't like it? Tough. I'm going to bring the Bible what the Bible says. I'm going to bring to Christians with Donald Trump. Before destruction, the heart of man is hogged. Donald Trump, is if he doesn't repent and get right and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there's, there's destruction coming to him. And there are Christians that just loves him. And, and they, Christians tell me, he's got a, Christians, the ones that love him tell me he's got a problem with pride. And before honor is humility. No Christian is going to be honored. Because they are not in humility representing a man of pride because they're proud of the man they got.
It makes me ill, and this is why I preach and teach what I do. Politics turns you away from God and gets you a man. Um, what is it? Guns, guts, the Bible, or something like this. People say down south. How come the Bible's last? Because you have more faith and trust in a gun than you do have the Bible. That's a sorry state. And there are people who have, and I'm not against guns, but there are people, you know, they're, they're proud and honored. Trying to think of um, There's a Bible verse, I forgot it was, something about carrying their peace or something like that. And that and it was a pastor of a church. They right there, that's God saying that we can carry our gun. Carry your oh, so you're gonna change the Bible so you can give me a biblical term to have to really? You know what my notion is? Listen, I'm a sinner. I confess my sins. And as all Christians, it's all the world. I'm going to be standing at the judgment seat of Christ with Christians. And I'm going to have to give an account for sins I didn't even know were sins, or I knew they were sins, but I didn't acknowledge it as sin. And if I'm versed up in the Bible, if I'm read up in the Bible, and I pray with the Bible, and I, I witness lost people, and I help Christians grow, and there are some sins in here that I'm going to even be shocked at the judgment seat of Christ. Imagine the one that doesn't read the Bible. Imagine the one that doesn't pray. Imagine the one that doesn't do what God tells him to do. And take that for the lost man, then at the great white throne judgment where all his sins. You know, we don't take the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment for all the value it because because we don't understand how much is going to be judged. 